Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, I'm out at uh, Julius Kleiner Park today uh, and I've got the uh, Hubson Ace Pro with me. Now you're going to see something a little different here. It's got a black battery on there. Why is that? Well, that's actually uh, the battery from the Blackhawk 2, the EXO Blackhawk 2. Uh, they're the same drone. The Hubson Ace Pro and the Blackhawk 2 Pro are the same drone. Uh, and the Blackhawk 2, that's part of why I'm making this video, wanted to tell you the story about it. Uh, I am actually sending that drone in, well have actually, I worked with uh, EXO's uh, customer service department and uh, that drone, the, uh, the gimbal died on it, the gimbal quit powering up on it and I was kind of wanted to see how their customer service worked and I have to tell you it worked great. Uh, their customer service guy evaluated it and said, yeah, you definitely got a dead gimbal. He said, file the warranty claim. So I did. I went on their website, filed a warranty claim. There were quite a few questions, but it was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And within a day or so, uh, they sent me a, a return uh, shipping label. So I boxed it back up, shipped it back to them, and they're going to ship me another one back. But one of the things they said to do is just, they said, just keep your, uh, your extra battery. So uh, I did, and I happened to notice that I'd charged it up. It was full. So not being one to waste a full battery, uh, we're going to fire up the, uh, the Hubson Ace Pro and fly it around here. A couple of things to look at. One of the things is the last time I flew this guy here, I had connection issues. And, and most of you that fly Hubson drones, uh, there is something about them. If you put your phone in airplane mode, I don't know if it causes interference, I don't know what it does, but you put it in airplane mode and it helps with that connection. Uh, so I want to try that today and see if I can definitively say that that's the truth, or not even definitively, but just a little anecdotal experiment, I would say. Because uh, like I said, the last time I was here at this park, I had several disconnections with this guy. So we'll try it. Uh, my phone is already in airplane mode, and we'll see what kind of a connection we get today. Uh, but anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's, uh, let's get this drone in the air. It's about 3 in the afternoon. Uh, you can, the sun is in my face here, really low winter sun here. So uh, anyway, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okie dokie, uh, we are connected to the aircraft and it is uh, uh, waiting for satellites. Oh, now we're in GPS mode. Uh, looking at here, it's not asking for any calibrations uh, and so forth. I really like this device status list that uh, Hubson gives you. Uh, gives you a look at, uh, at how the drone's doing. Uh, so, okay, let's switch it into video mode. Uh, you must take off to shoot photo or video, so... Uh, I forgot about that. I, I always forget about that with this drone. Uh, you can't do anything. Uh, you can't start video or mess around in that menu at all until you take off. So uh, let's go ahead. And, what the heck? Let's do an automated takeoff on the app. Are you sure you want to take off? Yes, we are. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It kind of moved over a little bit when it took off there, but we're in the air. Let's uh, blowing some leaves around here. We switched into video mode. Let's make sure we are in 4K 30. We are in 4K 30. We're on the 200 megabit bit rate. And by the way, I'm saving to internal memory. Let's double check that here. Yeah, internal storage. I, I because I took I took the SD card out of it. That's another thing to talk about here. And, uh, and uh, let's go ahead and start recording now. So we're recording. Uh, but what I wanted to say uh, was that you get better results saving to the internal memory. I've kind of found out that out the hard way. So I uh, just want to kind of remind you of that, that you're always better off on this drone saving to internal memory. Therefore, I don't even put an SD card in it. That way I don't make that mistake. But uh, Let's go ahead and get up in the air here. And we'll move forward a little bit, turn around. And uh, yeah, we'll do our droney first thing here. A little bit different direction, give you something else to see. And of course now that the, uh, the drone is facing into the sun, so there I am standing right there next to the, uh, next to the picnic table. 
Uh, anyway, okay, uh, reversing up now, reverse and up. And this is a noisy drone. You are not going to, uh, people are going to know that this guy's in the air. There's nothing stealthy about this guy at all. But anyway, you can see where I'm at at the park here. So we'll stop there for a second, and I'm going to pick that camera up a little bit. And uh, I think we ought to, uh, first thing, we ought to go in and do a, a rotation around the uh, sculpture here, uh, like I like to do. And I think this is a cool sculpture, uh, so it's worth it. Now, you're going to notice there's no, there are absolutely no leaves on those trees. And just, uh, wasn't very long ago, those... Uh, those trees were full of leaves. When winter starts, it doesn't mess around. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start that uh, rotation now. See if I can do it. I'm going to do it to the right this time. That's kind of my favorite way is rotating to the right when I do these manual rotations. And the key is trying to keep uh, that sculpture in center of frame and. You know, Hubson gives us pretty good flight controls, and I'm, I'm uh, really able to do it. So, uh, yeah, so it's working quite well. And again, this is in normal mode. It's not in the, uh, in the film mode, as Hubson calls it. I like that sculpture. I think that's a pretty cool design. Let's, uh, let's do something else real quick. And so far, our, uh, our uh, uh, control signal is really good. Let's go right over the top of this guy, dropping this camera down as we go. And, uh, you know, if you guys watch my videos, you know one of my other favorite moves is to do that uh, straight up and rotate. So let's move over here just a tad. That's about as close to center as I think we're going to get. That's center right there. So I'm going to do this all on the left stick. Uh, I'm going to move the, the left stick to the left and up, and we'll do a rotation, and we'll start uh, slowly, and then we'll speed it up as we go. And then, if I can, I will uh, I'll lift the camera up. I don't want to do it right now because it would be facing the sun, and do a little reveal. That'll tell you how much uh, Hubson has improved the flight controls on this drone. That I, you know, that I am able to do this kind of move and and keep it so steady. So let's start picking that camera up slowly, and we'll see if we can get a little reveal as we bring it around. And boom, there we go. There's the park right there. Stop at that, uh, roughly that rule of thirds, not quite. So there's the park, and we're up quite high now, so I'm going to drop it down. One of the things you figure out flying a drone is things are a lot more interesting lower than they are higher. So I don't see anybody in our way here, so let's, let's move forward here. And I'm, I'm dropping as we go. Yeah, I see somebody in the path there, so we'll kind of get off to the side. And we'll see if we can get over the pond here. And again, uh, trying to get it lower. Uh, that, let's see, you're seeing the flag there. I want to show that out. That, that's the Idaho Memorial to Fallen Soldiers is what that is right there. I always like to show that and another one of those sculptures. So uh, so let's, we're going to go right by that sculpture and we're going to get down here above the pond and uh, you're going to see a ton of waterfowl here. At least when I was on my walk earlier there were a lot of waterfowl running around. I'm not seeing any specifically. Of course I'm just looking at my FPV feed here. Yeah there's some there's some ducks there. There were a bunch of ducks here earlier. Yeah, there they are. There's some there on the other end. Let's just uh, fly forward and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, at the fountain here as we go by. Nice little rainbow. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to look pretty good. Pick that camera back up and let's go on the other side here. 
and thread our way through these trees. I want to make sure that I don't hit any of those uh, branches, but I think we're I think we're safe in this spot here. And miss that light pole there, and uh, get over the other pond here. And yeah, there's there's a bunch of waterfowl here. As long as they don't uh, look at those those ducks right there, right by the uh, right by the fountain. And these are these are seagulls, aren't they? Yeah, some seagulls out there on the ice. Saw a lot of ducks and geese. Yeah, there's a bunch of ducks there right on the side there. Saw a lot of ducks and geese earlier when I was out here. A lot of ducks there. Uh, they kind of, uh, I don't know if they winter here, but you sure see a lot of waterfowl here through the winter. So what do we got here? Yeah, that's just some, that's just something on the ice, isn't it? Yeah, I wondered what that was. It could you know? Sometimes it can be kind of hard to tell, just when you're looking at your uh, FPV screen. And look at our control has been solid. So I mean, I, I can't say that putting my phone in airplane mode has made the difference, but it sure seems to have here. Let's uh, let's do a uh, a rotation around our our, our the uh, band shell here. Uh, this is the one that my friend Mike Wright, the architect, says, why the heck would anybody build a band shell facing west into the sun? Uh, and I think he's right on. And they had to put those, uh, those covers on there to shade whatever the performers are that happen to be in there. So, yeah, kind of interesting. And I'm grabbing a little altitude here. I want to make sure I'm above everything as we go around. And then, I know what you're all deadly curious about, and I'm picking the camera up here so you can see them, and that is those pickleball courts off there. They are actually ready to go. They've opened them up. I haven't seen anybody really playing there yet. Let's see, maybe there might be somebody there right now. Yeah, it looks like there's somebody out there. Yeah, there's people playing on them, so we'll, uh, we won't go over the top. Yeah, that was me missing with the camera there. I need to adjust. I can see I need to adjust the uh, overrun on the uh, on the gimbal. Yeah, so that's pickleball. Uh, think of it as a uh, smaller version of tennis or a larger version of ping pong. Let's let's see if we can uh, uh, go. Uh, I'm going to try a rotation to the left this time. Challenge myself a little bit because this drone is so loud. I'm going to keep our distance. I don't want to distract anybody there. They're playing a game. If I if I had a quieter drone, I'd like the uh, Mini Three or something. I'd get in closer, but uh, but yeah, this guy is so damn loud. It's uh, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to bug him. I don't want to distract him while they're while they're playing their game. Okay, so pickleball courts in full action. You can see they rolled out some grass uh, that uh, you know, in, just in time for winter. Let's pick that camera up and. Uh, you guys have seen the uh, the the uh, Brie uh, 50 plus condos here, and I'm going to fly over the top, and I'll tell you why. Because last time uh, I did this, this is where I, I I remember specifically I had problems here with connection, and I was actually much closer to uh, to the drone at that time, and yeah, no connection issues now. So I'm. I really believe that there's something to that. Uh, when you're flying a Hubson drone, put your phone in airplane mode. I think that's a smart move. So we'll come around the other side here. I am getting a little bit of, of uh, stuttering on FPV. Yeah, and it says GPS interference. That's the other thing. We're down to 10 satellites. Uh, I don't know what it is about uh, Hubson drones, but I've also noticed that, that... Uh, you know, you, you, you tend to have, uh, you, you just don't get the strong GPS signal that you get with, say, a DJI drone. Notice that a number of times. We still just have 10 satellites, so kind of wild. Back in towards the band shell here. Let's pick this guy up.
And, uh, and let's get back over the uh, ponds here. And what I want to do is try, let's throw this guy into sport mode and, and see how we do here. And get it in a position where I can just go across from one pond to the other. And we got a pretty good looking horizon here today. This, uh, yeah, might be just a tad crooked, but often I found I have to adjust this guy, but this is looking good. Okay, we're gonna go into sport mode. And you can see that S at the top there. So uh, let's go full stick forward. Let's see how fast we can get this guy up to. 14, 15 meters per second, 15.5. Almost 16. There's 16 meters per second. 16.1. Yeah, I'm watching that drone. It is pitched forward, let me tell you. We'll go across into the field here. And then we'll try it the, uh, we'll try it the other direction and see how it does, too. We're down to 50% battery. We're getting pretty good battery life. We've been, uh, yeah, we started, and we're stopping right there. We started uh, uh, video after we took off, and we've been shooting video for 12 minutes, and it's not like I've been exactly easy on the throttle. Okay, let's go the other direction, and let's see how we do. Just to say wind-wise, let's let that van go by there. Okay, full stick forward right now. And we'll go, again, we'll go right over the top of the sculpture, and... Uh, and across the uh, the ponds and there's 16 meters per second so it really either direction we went there's 16.1 hasn't affected it much so that's pretty good this is a uh, I would say I would call this a challenging Wi-Fi environment uh, you know you, this is uh, you know an urban area uh, and the the the, uh, the village Meridian Village shopping centers right across there so uh, yeah let's bring you you know I haven't necessarily shown kind of these nooks and crannies and corners of the park here so let's fly let's fly back this direction let's see I'm going to take it out of sport go back into normal mode that was film mode. I'm going to go back into normal mode so we get a little softer uh, on the sticks. And, you know, moving sideways here, I am seeing a little crooked horizon. And I had a little bit of stuttering on FPV there, but not, you know, it wasn't horrible. But nonetheless, it was there. Yeah, but we, we definitely have a crooked horizon here now. As soon as I made that turn, it definitely tilted uh, tilted that gimbal a little bit. Let me pick it up just, I'm picking up the gimbal. Yeah, and it's telling us, yeah, and you can see that with my grid lines. Uh, yeah, so we're picking it up. Uh, and it's slowly starting to straighten out, which is typical. We're down to 40% battery. So let's bring it back in closer here and... Uh, Maybe we'll try. I think we should try uh, an uh, an an automated orbit. In fact, yeah, let's let's do an orbit. I, I was I was trying to remember. This drone does not have a helix move, but it does have an orbit. So, uh, as I recall, on this guy, you need to fly it right over the top of whatever it is you're going to orbit. So let's do that now. Let's fly it right over the top. I'm dropping that camera straight down. I didn't have the camera all the way down. So I think that's probably close enough for what we're doing. So I'm going to pick the camera back up. And uh, then we are going to uh, go into, click on the little, looks like an X, but it's actually, I think, supposed to be a picture of a drone. Pick orbit mode. And we're going to click I got it there. And then we're going to, we're not going to set the remote controller. We're going to set the drone's current location as center point. And I click next step. And uh, then I have to back it up. And as soon as, and you have to go at least five meters. You'll see that zero turn green when you're far enough. There you go. So 
Let's pull back. I don't know, far enough that we're out of the circle here. Yeah, I think that's going to look... Yeah, that's going to look pretty good. That's about 35 meters. Execute immediately. Then it should give us a... Uh, yeah, we can set the speed and you can reset the heading by... But uh, but let's go ahead and do this counterclockwise. Let's crank it up there pretty good speed-wise. And yeah, then it's just doing an automated orbit here. And uh, that is one of the things that Hubson is really good at. Their automated flight modes work good. And, you know, I'm watching the drone. It's just executing a perfect orbit facing into the sun there. It'll look better when we get the other, the other direction. So, uh, so then when we're done with this orbit, we'll fly it out a little ways and we'll, uh, we'll execute an automated return to home. And we'll see if the drone can get a precision landing. Yeah, and it's telling us the battery's at 30%. We're in good shape. We're really close to our home point. But uh, the drone, in fact, the drone is uh, just right in front of me now. It's pretty cool watching it, uh, watching it uh, fly sideways in the air like that. That's pretty darn cool. Okay, so I'm going to click that stop up in the top left. And that got it out of that mode. Let's pick up the camera. And let's, turn, let's go out into this field over here. Across from the CarMax. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll kick it into return to home. And we'll see if we can get a precision landing on the landing pad over here. Let's go out there a little ways. 27% battery. We're in good shape. Boy, we are just about looking directly into the sun. And, and you know, the horizon straightened out quite a bit. Look, it's a little crooked, but not bad at all. So, yeah, let's go ahead and let's do, I'm going to do return to home on the controller. Held that down. And it looks like the drone. Yeah, I don't know where I had the return to home height, but clearly it was higher than that. It's ascending, yeah, about 40 meters, and it's turning around here. So, uh, yeah, here it comes. And I'm going to fire up the, uh, the Action 2 camera so that we can record that. Uh, record the landing, hopefully a precision landing. There you can, dropping that camera down, but it's... It moved right along, so the camera is straight down now. And it's a little off, isn't it? Yeah, so it says data preparation. So it moves into a much, uh, it, it actually kind of quits recording. Let's see if it spots that landing pad. Searching for drone apron. Yeah, did it, is it going to see it? Yeah, it didn't. It didn't see it. So, uh, so I'm going to stop that. Well, I tried to stop it, but it's not letting me, and it's not responding to uh, the stick. So we landed in the grass there. I hit stop, uh, and it didn't stop the return to home. I didn't try the button on the controller, but I'm going to show you. I move the camera around here. And, uh, and that's where it landed in the grass. So it's quite a ways off. Uh, it, just, it just never saw the landing pad. So. There we go. Uh, one of the things I like about this drone is it, uh, it stops recording when it lands. So let me get everything shut down and we'll do our conclusion. Hey, okay guys, uh, the Hubson Ace Pro, that flight was pretty darn good. I'm anxious to see what the video looks like uh, off the SD card because uh, this time I made sure and saved to the internal memory on this guy and what you have to do then you just pull this little flap down there's a, a uh, believe it or not it's a micro USB port that you hooked up up to and then you just offload it onto your uh, computer. Uh, so anyway it works pretty good and that's how you're going to get the best results on video. And I think the other thing that we uh, that we proved is the way you're going to get best results 
uh, on the, uh, and I'm looking for the gimbal cover here. What did I do with it? Here's the gimbal cover right here. Uh, so I think the way you're going to get the best results is with connection is, I mean, I, I can't say definitively, uh, but I definitely, our connection was perfect that time with the phone in airplane mode. So I'm going to tell you, uh, you just got to remember to do that, and, uh, and I think you'll get a better result because the last time I flew this very drone out here, man, I was having all kinds of connection issues, and my phone was not. In, uh, in airplane mode so uh, anyway we tried we did a bunch of fun stuff I thought I don't know I hope you guys enjoyed it I had a lot of fun doing it this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho quadcopter channel out and if you like this kind of content please consider subscribing to my channel uh, most of all I absolutely appreciate you uh, taking the time to look at this video and yeah of course we'll see on the, on the next one uh, the uh, Hubson Ace Pro uh, uh, the the brother drone to the Blackhawk 2 Pro, uh, the EXO Blackhawk 2 Pro and the Hubson Ace Pro, same drone really. See you guys later. Bye now.